What's up, Technobo here for Server Pro and welcome to this tutorial for installing and using the CurseForge launcher. So if you've previously played mod packs, you're probably already used to the workflow of using the Twitch launcher. However, recently Overwolf took over the launcher and hence created the new CurseForge launcher beta. This is what I'll be showing you how to install and use in this video. To begin, head across to curseforge.overwolf.com, linked in the description down below, and simply click the Download for Windows button over here. After the download completes, simply open up the installer, you can choose a language in the bottom left, and then click Next to proceed with the installation. On this screen, you'll get an option to create a shortcut for CurseForge. Simply make sure that this is checked for the easiest use of the program. Then at the very bottom, you'll need to accept this as well, and then click Next. After doing this, CurseForge will proceed to download and then install. Finally, you can click Launch to start up the program or open it with the new shortcut on your desktop. Then, after skipping through this intro over here, you'll have access to the main program. With this video, I'll also be showing you how to install a mod pack and play it on your own server. So, I'll click on Minecraft to select this and then click Continue after choosing an install location. Now we have the ability to view our installed mod packs, or click the Browse tab at the very top where we can search for mod packs here. What I'll be doing is searching for, say, Sky Factory. After searching for it at the very top, I see a list of results down here, and when I find the mod pack that I'm looking for, I can simply click Install next to it, then CurseForge will download it and install it for us. And eventually, you'll be able to click Play to launch up the mod pack. Next time you'd like to launch it up, simply head across to the Minecraft tab on the very far left and you'll find it under the My Mod Pack section. Starting up the game, you'll more than likely do another download or two after signing in with your Microsoft or Mojang account. From here, I'll select Minecraft Java Edition and you'll see Sky Factory 4 or whatever mod pack you downloaded is already selected here. After clicking Play and understanding that we're playing with mods, we'll probably be doing another download or two. And as you can see, the mod pack is already starting up. While this is starting up, let's go ahead and get our server set up. Heading across to my Minecraft server dashboard on my Server Pro account, what I'm going to do is change the version of the server from paper to a Sky Factory server. How do we do this? Well, simply create a backup of your plugins and your world by heading across to the Files tab. After downloading and backing up what you'd like to keep, you can head back to the Dashboard tab and then click Change next to the version of your Minecraft server up here. Now, I'll be changing the type over here all the way down to Sky Factory 4, but that of course is only if your mod pack is listed here. If it's not listed here, you can still install it manually. You can also contact the Server Pro support team for help. Click the I in the top right hand corner of this video or the link in the description down below for a video on how to manually install mod packs. Select the correct Minecraft version if there are more than one, and we can choose whether we'd like to remove files or keep them. We do recommend that you remove previous files so that there are no conflicts with the previous server file versions. This is important as it reduces the chances of your server crashing or corrupting files. I for one will be choosing to remove my files as I'd like to regenerate the world and everything else in it. I'll then click reinstall and reinstall once again. Right now, your server is busy installing and preparing the world for the first use. Give it a few minutes before attempting to connect from a client. You can view the progress by heading across to the console tab on the left hand side. As soon as this stops scrolling, it's safe to assume that your server is started up properly. The first launch is usually the longest. When your server is started up, you can head back to the dashboard section where we can get information to connect to our server through our Minecraft client. You'll either be using the hostname or the IP address, colon, the port over here if it's not the default of 25565. I'll be connecting to techno.mcpro.io for example. Heading back to my client, I'll head into the multiplayer section and I'll add a server. I'll give it a name and enter the address, techno.mcpro.io. After clicking done, you should see that the server pings and eventually you'll be able to join it. I'll click on it and join the server. And there we go, you can now see I've loaded into my server and I can play it exactly as you'd expect. This is of course a skyblock world, so there isn't too much to see, but you can see that it's working as you'd hope and we've got all of our mod pack items over here for us to play with and use. I'll head across to the console section and I'll give myself op by typing in op techno, hitting enter and I'll be able to change into game mode creative here. Once again, you can see all of the custom items on this list over here. The mod pack is working as you'd hope and expect. 
If the server you're trying to connect to is running an old version of the mod pack, you can click on the mod pack in your mod pack list over here, click the three dots, and then click versions. In here, you'll be able to choose a previous version of the mod pack that you can switch to at any moment. After selecting it and clicking continue, you'll then be switching across to said mod pack. But anyways, that's about it for this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. If you have any video suggestions, leave them in the comments below. If you're having issues with anything, contact our support team. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!